For the past few weeks, I've been working on a pretty cool productivity tool for the Mac. I use it on my work laptop and my personal laptop, and I've been loving it. I think you're going to love it too. So let's not waste any time. Let's just jump right in. What is it? Well, it's called Hammerflow, and we'll talk about why in a minute. Uh, but the idea is a way to navigate your Mac, to issue commands, to interact with Raycast. It does a lot. We'll get into some of the features. Uh, but the, the main feature of this is that it uses a leader key setup. Typically on a Mac, you would use keyboard shortcuts. So you might say command shift P will, I don't know, print the page or turn it into a PDF or command S is save, you know, simple shortcuts. So say you have an app like Todoist and you want a global shortcut that at any point, whether you're in Todoist or not, you just press this shortcut and it will pop up the add task menu. You know, makes sense, makes it easy to capture tasks quickly. Well, the problem with shortcuts is if you need that to be globally unique, which you do, then you're going to have to use a lot of modifiers. So you may do command, control, alt, T, for example, to say like Todoist, add task. And that works. It's kind of hard to remember. It's a little bit of finger gymnastics. And as you add more and more of these for different apps, it just starts to become a little bit of a pain to use them. A common solution for this is the hyper key. Now hyper just means all four modifiers. So command, control, shift, and alt. So you, instead of uh, having to press all four of those keys and then press some letter, you can just press hyper letter. So a lot of people will turn caps lock into their hyper key when it's held down. That's a, that's a common way to solve this problem. The limitation with that is you only get one layer. So what that does is it opens up your keyboard, right? You can use T for Todoist. You could use V to jump straight to VS code or use E to open your email app. Like you can, you can these keys that are on your keyboard that normally have shortcuts tied to them on the hyper layer, they're available. So that's cool, but it's only one layer. So say, for example, I have T for Todoist, but I also want to have something for my terminal. And that's also T, like it makes sense in my head for that to be T. So, okay, well, I'm, I'm using Ghosty for my terminal. I'll use G instead of T. But then next week, a new terminal app's going to come out that I just have to switch to if I want to keep my street cred. And so now G doesn't really make sense anymore. You get the idea. It's a little bit limiting to only have that single layer. So a leader key is another way of doing shortcuts. It's very similar, but instead of holding down modifiers and then pressing your key, you'll actually press your keys in a sequence. VS Code has a feature called chords that's very similar to this. So VS Code, you might press Command K, then you can let go of those keys and then press any other key. It could be a, a command shortcut again, like Command P, or you can just press J to go to the start of the line or something like that. You can configure using these uh, chords, as they call them. So this is pretty much the same thing, but it's global for your Mac. So you may have seen some of these shortcuts uh, animating on the screen. So like this, leader WH will push your window to the left half of the screen. If you use Vim bindings, H left, L right, you know, that, that makes sense. <laughs> That's why I picked that. Or here, leader LMG, what opens GitHub. And that, at first that seems like, how is this better? This does not seem better. So let's, let's look at the configuration and you'll get an idea of why that, that shortcut makes sense. Uh, okay. So first I want to tell you about the tool itself. So what does Hammerflow do? Well, it lets you use a Toml configuration file to configure shortcuts for your Mac. So once you've set up a leader key, so in my case, I use F18 and I'll explain that a little bit more <laughs> in a couple minutes. That doesn't sound like a convenient key, but it is. Uh, once I press the leader key, then if I press T, it will launch terminal. If I press B, which in my brain is browser, it will open Safari or V for VS code. Uh, you get the idea. So I can just say lead or key, whatever key equals, and then the app that I want to launch. And I'll go to the full example so we can see you can open an app or you could open a URL, launch a URL in your browser. Uh, if you pass an array, you can actually rename uh, the shortcut in the little the UI that pops up at the bottom of the screen. In fact, I'll just pop it up. There you go. So it's down at the bottom. 
So here you can see I have a VS code, even though the name actually is Visual Studio Code. And the reason I did that is just because it fits better. But this is where it starts to get really cool. You can create groups with Hammerflow to nest actions. So for example, I have L for links. So I gave it a label of links, which you'll see down in the UI here, L for links. And then I can reuse some of the same keys. So for example, we had G here to launch Google, but if I press L and then G, then it will launch GitHub. So maybe I don't use that as often, so I put it in the sub menu, or B for Blue Sky, or T for Twitter. So I can nest these keys inside the L group. So now I press leader L G and it opens GitHub in my browser. So it's pretty cool. So it kind of, it, it makes sense in my brain where I'm like, okay, start my shortcut and then links G for GitHub or links T for Twitter. So you can kind of set up this phonetic shortcut that seems like it would be hard to memorize, but because it's just whatever works in your brain, like that whatever makes sense to you, just use it. You don't have to worry about globally conflicting, conflicting shortcut keys, anything like that. If it makes sense in your head, put it in the file, give it a try, see if it works. So the nice thing about this is it's just a Toml config. Now there's some code underneath and we'll talk about that, but ultimately you can just come in here, add a new line, you're just editing text like you normally do when you're writing code and boom, you have a new shortcut. It even has hot reloading enabled by default that you can use. So as soon as you save it, you're gonna get a new uh, keyboard shortcut, very cool. We also support uh, Raycast. And by we support Raycast, what I really mean is Raycast supports deep links. <laughs> so we can just open a deep link and open any Raycast action that we want. You can just copy these straight from Raycast. In fact, I'll show you. Oh, I need to recenter, reset position. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so Raycast, say I want to open the emoji picker. So I can do highlight the emoji picker, hit command K, and then there's this action for copy deep link. So if I copy that now on my keyboard, as you'll see here, uh, I've got this uh, deep link. So then I just paste that in here and it will launch Raycast. So for example, in my setup, if I press leader, R for Raycast, and then E for emoji, it pops up the emoji picker. So I can just, anytime if I'm typing, I just leader R E, boom, I got my emoji picker. So, so far, all we've talked about is launching apps and opening URLs, which includes Raycast, which does open up a lot. But still, apps and URLs is basically what we're talking about. So what else can we do? There's gotta be more, right? Like that's cool, it's nice, an app launcher, navigator, whatever, but there's more we can do, definitely more. So first, uh, we have this text prefix and email protected. I am just seeing this for the first time. Oh, Cloudflare is protecting, I put an example e email address in there. <laughs> it's deployed to Cloudflare and getting blocked. Okay, I'll fix that, but I'll just show you what it does. So this text prefix will basically type for you. Uh, so kind of like, a, I guess it's not a macro, it's not, you know, keyboard presses, but you can say text. So for example, uh, I'll just open Raycast, and then if I do leader M, I can press E for email, and it will type in my email. Uh, what else? Is there anything in there I can show you? Not really. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, uh, it's got some text in there and then you can just type it quickly. So when you're filling out forms, you can do address or your phone number, stuff like that. So it's just useful on your computer to type things quickly. Okay, cool. You can also run any command. So say that sometimes I edit my ZSHRC file uh, and instead of having to navigate to the terminal, and run code ZSHRC, I can instead just use a prefix and open it right away. Uh, I also made a shorthand for code, which works a little bit better. So if you're like, I wanna open something in Visual Studio Code, you just use the code prefix and then give it the path to whatever file or directory. We also have a shortcut, and this is very handy for the situation I was describing before. So Todoist, which I actually use, Todoist has a a uh, keyboard shortcut that you can hit globally to add a task. Now, that's the only way that you can bring that menu up. So there's no, they don't have the concept of like deep links like Raycast has. So instead I can say, okay, uh, here we have command shift four, but in my setup, I actually have, have it set up to hit, I think it's like command alt 
shift T, something like that. I don't even know what it is. It doesn't matter. I just said it once. And now I can just say leader O for open and then T for task. And boom, I have my quick launcher for Raycast. So you can, for apps that have uh, global keyboard shortcuts, you can actually integrate those with Hammerflow so that you can still access any of those actions. Uh, reload, this is a reserved word uh, in the actions. And all it does is reload your config. So if you don't want to use the hot reloading, you can turn that off and then go here. And uh, if you have this reload action set up somewhere, then you can reload your config with a Hammerflow sequence. Pretty cool. Uh, input, this is brand new. And shout out to Ben Holman. I paired with him on Friday in his pyramid scheme program. And we came up with this input action. So this is when you want to get input from the user, I mean, from yourself, you want to be able to type something in and then apply it to some action. So in this case, it's just a URL, we just want to open a URL. So if I were to do, I have a search example here, but I actually have a maps example set up in my own uh, Hammerflow config. So if I do leader O and then M for maps, it will pop up this field. And then if I type in, hey there, it will open up Google Maps. It searched for hey there, and we found hey there productions, whatever that is. So that's pretty cool. It's a way that you can just quickly uh, grab some input from the user, and then you can decide where in the URL it goes with this uh, input token here inside the handlebars. So what else can we do? Well, we actually have some built-in window management. So you can use the window prefix to do some window movement. And then if you don't want to use that, maybe you already use Raycast window management and you have some custom layouts and other things set up on there. Well, remember Raycast is just deep links. So for left half or right half or center half or whatever, you can just copy the deep link, boom, use Raycast window management, no problem. And that's mostly it. Oh, there is one advanced feature down here. So this is the HS prefix which this will actually just run whatever hammer spoon code you want. So in this case, I'm flashing up an alert that says hello world. Uh, but if you don't use hammer spoon already, you're probably not really going to use this, but you can, Hey, if you want to go crazy. So that's basically the features we have right now. I already have an idea for a functions feature. This is also something that Ben Holman and I went back and forth on. And it's a way for you to write your own function in Lua. And then I'm thinking it'll be a function prefix. So it'll just function colon in the name of your function. And then at that point, you know, in your Lua code, you can do whatever you want and whatever Hammerspoon functions you want, which is a lot. Speaking of Hammerspoon, I haven't mentioned it yet. But if we go back to the home page of Hammerflow, you'll see that under the hood, Hammerflow relies on Hammerspoon. Now, Hammerspoon is a well-known Mac productivity app. It's been around for a long time, very battle tested, and it's very powerful as well. It can do a whole lot of stuff. So this is the truth about Hammerflow is it's really just a glorified TOML parsing script. <laughs> That's basically all it's doing is parsing your TOML and then turning it into something that Hammerspoon, Hammerspoon can use to automate your Mac or trigger your actions. Uh, so I think I came up with a cool API with these prefixes and the text and the renaming, that kind of stuff. Uh, but ultimately it is just taking Toml and using Hammerspoon. So that means it's reliable and it also means it's kind of like Shad CN, but for your shortcuts, because you, when you check this out, if you look at the, the quick start, when you clone this repo, you're actually just creating a Hammerspoon config. So at that point, you can open up the code, see how Hammerflow works, change it if you want, tweak things, add your own prefixes if you want. So you pull it down, but then at that point, it's kind of yours. You can do what you want with it. I have instructions here for people who are brand new to Hammerspoon and people who already use Hammerspoon. If you already use Hammerspoon, you can install Hammerflow as a spoon. <laughs> I'm saying a lot of hammer words in this video, but you can see uh, you just check it out like a normal uh, hammer spoon spoon and then configure it the same way that you're used to. So if you use hammer spoon already, it'll be familiar to you. It's, it's pretty standard. If you don't use hammer spoon, don't worry. All you have to do is clone this and then install the hammer spoon app. And that's really all you have to do. 
Now let's talk again about why I use F18 as my uh, leader key. The reason is I use an app called Carabiner Elements, which is another very popular and battle-tested app for Mac, and it's for rebinding keys. So I use it to rebind like caps lock to escape, for example. But I also use it to bind write command to F18. And the reason I picked that is I don't really use write command option. For some reason, I always use left command when I'm doing a shortcut. And on top of that, write command exists on my external keyboard and it also works on my laptop. And it's kind of in the same spot near my right thumb. So that means I can use these hammer flow shortcuts very easily on my laptop or on an external keyboard. So whether I'm on the go or at home, all my shortcuts are there, everything's the same, very convenient. So I would recommend using Carabiner Elements to map right command to F18 or whatever you know non-existent keyboard key you wanna use and use that as a dedicated leader key. If we look at the settings, you can use uh, mods. So you could set, you know, like hyper L as your leader key if you wanna keep your like hyper shortcut, but have a way to jump into hammer flow from there. So you can do that. Uh, in that case, you would obviously just use all four mods as your mod here and then L as your leader key. So you have options, but I recommend using the single key just because it's so fast. You can just flow right through your keyboard shortcuts and I find it to be really productive. So give it a try. Let me know what you think. I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you in the next video.